I'd like to spend a couple minutes talking about pistol retention. And one of the first things I like to talk about is it's a hand gun, not a hands gun. Uh, yes, we shoot two hands all the time, but it turns out we eliminate a lot of our options if we, in terms of retention, if we clamp. Uh, true jiu-jitsu is not force on force. Uh, so we're going to explore some other options that um, uh, give us some capabilities that we wouldn't otherwise have. So the first thing we're going to do is demonstrate when I grab hard and you're going to slowly take it away without breaking my so he's, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to clamp down traditionally. He's going to find a way to bridge this. I was like, that's not good. I'm going to go other side, give me different takeaways. Wrench it out. Okay, so just clamping. Uh, one hand, little bit, let's say I have a flashlight or a dog or a shield or that. That's not good. Left handed. Do another one. So all, the, all these takeaways uh, <clears throat> are going to be effective one way or the other, primarily because he's using leverage. He, uh, this is the fulcrum, that's the end of the lever, and I'm holding the fulcrum in place, and I'm just losing the lever war. So a basic principle to understand, and the way you can drill this, is anytime he puts force on the weapon, I move the fulcrum exactly where he wants to go, and I reposition myself. So in this case, he's very close. Let's go again, sort of moving around slowly, sort of gimbal it around. See? And I'm just walking with him, and I'm using my feet. Uh, when I run out of travel with my hands. Again, just go slow, just for drilling. Okay, this is resistance. Go into me, this is resistant. It gets my whole body. This is non-resistance. I walk with him. He throws himself off top. He comes into me, I slew with him, and I use my other arm to get sort of other uh, sort of defensive measures. Now, he's got a good grip on this, that's fine. Maybe he wants to put it in close. Fine, I'll put it even closer. Boom. I'm going to make him more concerned about his balance and what's going to happen, neck wrenching, strikes, uh, all, all these sort of, sort of things. So the key thing is to learn to sort of give it away for a second. The first part of this conflict is follow him around. He's close. I'm good. And I'm just going to freestyle a little bit. In that case, I put his head down. Pay good attention to his structures. Go slower so we can watch. He's going kind to of twist it up and over. I enter. Launch of the cameras. Don't let him get it. Yep, he wants it. Go after his head. I'm going to be a little bit more uh, stingy with this. Good. He's close. Strike. Pull his head back. Knee him. Stomp. Let's say he gets it from me. I still follow in, and you know that's my worst case scenario. I don't, I don't give up. It's going to take him a moment to get that weapon running. Strike, strike, get it back. So when I'm drilling in this game, notice a lot of one-handed work. This allows my other weapon. Excuse me. Go for it. It allows me to do some redirections and make it difficult for him to actually get this thing. Movement, movement, there's his head. Most people bring their head with them to the fight. If I'm a kicker, boom, strike. I'm floating out here. He gets it, that's great. I go with his motion, motion. I stuff his head. Strike, strike. I switch hands on him. I'm not opposed to uh, helping myself out. He gets in a crazy position. I'll reach in my other hand and I will help myself out. Bad position. Then I get my other hand in. Rotate it around him. Look at it. Hyperextension, strikes. So it turns out when I brace, it's the worst for me. One or two handed. I'm going to get back here. I'm going to brace it tight. Bracing is not the solution. Yanking back and forth is not the solution. <laughs> he follows me. Uh, he's, he's got good tendon strength, good body strength. I'm going to go into a struggle with him. Did it. Do it. Did it. <laughs> I'm struggling with him. Don't like it. I'm not going to struggle with him. I'm going to move with him. 
circle. <laughs> Whoop. I'm not even striking. If I wanted to strike, I would. High jab, knee shot, break his ankle. Move it, move it. Look at him. I'm gonna drop him on my knee. That's not good for him. Hyperextend his neck. Put him onto the, onto the ground. So, sort of the point is, I have a choice. I can brace and deal with that, or I can be a mover. We have a saying in our school, movement trumps force. We need a minimal amount of force, but movement is far superior. It doesn't matter how strong he is, if he doesn't have a good grip on that, and it's on the move, I can work with him. Strike, strike, strike. He goes for a double leg. I move. I'm not going to try and, uh, he goes to kick me. I'm going to move. He goes to punch me. I'm going to move. He goes to grab my firearm. I move just a little bit. All right, so just a quick insight. We'll go into some other tips on how I'm using it, how I'm working against him. Uh, we'll go into some other ideas in a couple other videos. I hope it gets across that there are options other than bracing for impact and wrestling inside here. All right, thanks.